you are seriously squeamish about uh, using animal products, specifically animal hides, uh, time to look up, okay? That's right. I'm making a leather bag. Specifically, it's a ladies leather bag. This is Morocco leather, otherwise known as goat leather. I, I chose this leather not because it's the most luxurious or the most expensive. Uh, it's soft and pliable enough to be uh, uh, to be used in a home sewing machine. In fact, uh, this kind of leather you can use with just about any sewing machine that you have, except probably the weakest ones. I'll be honest, when I started this project, I didn't think that I will actually record this because this was supposed to be a, a surprise for my wife. But then I realized that I, I didn't want to record it because my wife does all the editing. So if I see, if she sees the video, she will get to know what I'm working on. But then I realized that uh, she can always edit it after receiving this gift from me. So I changed my mind and now I'm going to record it. So for that reason, what has happened is I have done some part of the work. The work that I've done so far is just cut out my basic panels. I have a pretty uh, pretty detailed diagram of the design that I'm working on. Uh, reach out to me via either my Twitter handle or an email and I'll be happy to share it with you if you want to try this out at your home. Now, basically there are two panels right now. The leather panel and a fabric panel which is the liner and the main core of the bag. So the liner is basically 400 thread count Egyptian cotton and the core is uh, 12 ounce cotton duck and I have basically gone ahead and made a quilting pattern. Uh, all the quilting is done, I haven't sewn any edges because that will be done later on when I connect these two pieces and specifically this is 19 and a half inch by, by 9 inch with uh, rounded corners on one side. Uh, that's one part. The other is of course a panel of leather. Again, 9 inches by 19 and a half. Uh, now, uh, because goat is a small animal, you might have trouble making, uh, taking out a piece that's 19 and a half inch long. Uh, I ran into a similar problem, okay. So, uh, I, I got it out in two separate pieces and stitched them together. I didn't like the seam to be there in front of the back, so I added a, layer, a strip of cotton duck and, and decorated it slightly. So yeah, so that, that, that looks good. You certainly can get it from a single piece of leather, that's up to you. So the remainder of the video, I will uh, put, together rest, uh, put together the rest of the back and uh, let's get started on that right away, okay? Figuring out the correct order of operation for these kinds of projects is very important. Uh, if you go wrong, then uh, you might not later have an uh, have the proper access to maybe install a zipper or a button for that matter. So I started off with installing the zipper first on the leather side. Uh, you see me using an iron so that the leather uh, is able to hold the seam. And overall, it, it did a pretty good job. I think I set it to rayon. Here I am using a pretty standard zipper foot, only I have swapped out with a heavier gauge of thread, uh, back closing thread to be precise, and I believe it's an 18 gauge needle that I am using. The white fabric that you see me stitching along with the zipper is actually the backing material or the lining material that will line the zipper side of the pocket. Yes, that's right. You have guessed it correctly. I suck at installing a zipper, okay? I don't know how to reinforce the two corners. The way I do it is I just uh, contact cement two pieces of leather on both sides. And then what I've done over here is uh, reinforce them with a couple of crisscross stitches. It gets the job done. Maybe there's a better way of doing it, but that's how I choose to do it. Now to make the pocket for the cell phone that my wife will be using, I had already made some measurements. But I decided not to go with that, instead I have taken the measurements from the cell phone in situ. And you will notice that the flap top is not exactly straight, it's actually at an angle. 
this angle is because on the right side there's a audio jack uh, which I didn't want to interfere with the leather so that's why you have the clearance to the right and a bunch of blue lines are basically trying to make sure that I have calculated the correct seam and fold allowances respectively. I'm merely transferring the pattern again on the white backing material that will go in the pocket. Now here you will see I am not uh, stitching all the four corners of the pocket along with the backing material and only stitching the top. Now I am doing that because I have to install a button on the leather side first and once I have done that I may go ahead and stitch all the four corners. It's a standard magnet button that I am installing. In hindsight, I should not have placed uh, this magnet close to the mobile phone, but it really doesn't bother the phone as much, so I'm going with it. Oh, by the way, I tried using a standard uh, presser foot, but leather is quite a slippery material. Um, it was really difficult keeping all the layers together, so I decided to use a walking foot instead. Now uh, this uh, cell phone pocket that I wanted, I did not want it to be flat, I wanted it to have a profile, a thickness uh, which would be somewhat equal to the thickness of the phone. So again I am using an iron here to uh, make Z folds on three sides. And again, I set the iron uh, to a temperature of rayon and that seems to be the sweet spot. Now before I could uh, stitch the pocket onto the leather, on the primary leather panel, I had to line that with the lining material as well. Because the pocket has two sides, one is the outer side uh, which you just saw me making but it will be stitched to the primary leather panel which also needs to be lined. Now stitching the pocket to the primary leather panel was a pain in the butt to put it lightly. The stitching machine was actually doing quick work of being able to push the needle through the several layers of leather. That was not the problem. The problem really was somehow the top thread uh, was missing the bobbin thread. So I ended up having a bunch of missed stitches and then I have to remove it and go back doing it over all over again. And unlike fabric leather, uh, if you stitch and then you remove the uh, threads, it leaves a bunch of ugly holes. So I had to align the needle uh, of the machine such that the needle would again punch through the exact same hole. So yeah, it took me a long time and it was uh, very painful really. Uh, this is me trying to size up my version of an envelope style flap for my pocket. You will see a bunch of blue lines all over my pattern. Uh, again, I suck at this, so I wanted to make sure that I have accounted for every seam 
and every fold that uh, needs to go so that my dimensions are correct. And of course you're seeing a time lapse over here so things will appear a lot faster than the speed at which I actually did the work. Okay, so the time lapse was really not doing good justice to the pain that I endured in trying to make this thing. So I decided to film this segment in, in real speed. I am merely trying to copy the pattern for the flap onto my white backing material. And you'll see how painfully slow I am in trying to figure this thing out. Yeah, if you if you are at all trained in in stitching or or making a bag, this is the time uh, at which you might be shouting and said, "Oh, that's not the way you do it." But okay, look, I'm not trained, so that's all I got. Oh, by the way, uh, I actually failed to make this three times. So I made it once, it didn't work. The second one sort of worked, but the dimensions were wrong. And the third one was finally okay enough to be put on the bag. Again, I was not super happy with it, but hey, that's the best I could do. Again, I, act I actually stitched the backing material and the flap inside out and then turned them over. I like this technique, it gives a cleaner uh, finish for the edges I think. And finally, after a day's work, I was able to complete the pocket along with the matching flap. Whew, it was really difficult. Uh, the next day morning, it was time for me to install the two magnet buttons on the primary flap.
The white fabric that you see, that's actually the lining material for the leather piece that's only stitched to the top near the zipper. I did not stitch the three other sides because I needed access to that leather fabric for me to be able to install the magnet buttons. So now that I have installed the buttons, I can go ahead and do a basting stitch which basically fixes the lining material on the two opposite sides. Now it was time for me to stitch the primary leather panel and the primary cotton backing material and the core together. I will be stitching this inside out and you will notice that I am not actually stitching it through the entire perimeter. I am only stitching the flap region and uh, the edge above the zipper. The remainder will be left unstitched for the time being because they will also be able to receive the side panels and they will need to be stitched together so I'm leaving them unstitched right now. On the lower left screen you will actually see me trying to wrestle this thing to turn it right side out again. Because uh, not the entire leather was stitched properly, it wasn't really holding the edge where it needed to. So I actually went ahead and uh, used an iron to fold the edges in, even though they were not stitched right now. Okay guys, this is as far as I had gone in working this thing for two straight days over the weekend. I'm going to call it a video right now and I'm going to post this out as part one and again when I have time this weekend I hopefully will be able to complete this. So friends and followers thank you so much for joining me in this video. I will see you again next time. Uh, goodbye.